and welcome back to PGL Spring Tavern Tales. My name is Nimshna. I'm here with Lothar and Raven. We are still at round three. We have this backup match for you. So we had a second match set up starting a bit later than the match that we've just seen. And because Thais is uh, apparently one of the fastest Zoo players alive. Oh, yeah, and l rolling fours. Yeah, it's <laughs> really good at rolling fours. The whole set was built on him rolling a four on that implosion. But yeah. he, did play, <laughs> he did play perfectly. Like, I was uh, talking to Raven that it's a pleasure watching Thais play. Mm -hmm. It's just... He makes a move, and then you think about it, and you're like, "Yeah, right. That was that was the best. That play. was that was most likely the best play. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's pretty. Turns good. out Tice is pretty good. Absolutely. Who knew? European yeah. champion. <laughs> but uh, right now we have uh, lined up two more players: uh, Gosu Forever, who is the last year's Fireside Gathering champion. He was mm -hmm. the one who uh, qualified for Fireside Gatherings, and he won the Fireside Gathering championships. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get make it to the European Championships, but he did show up a lot of skill. Uh, he is from Spain. And then the second player is from Greece, and his name is Tsibu. Tsibo. Okay. Apparently. Well, I don't know Greek. So, you know. He's a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's playing the warlock. He has an acidic swampus in the hand already. Well, it does, doesn't really matter. And he's actually matchup. winning, right? Uh, he's oh, yeah, right. He's winning because it's 1-0 um, for... How do it? For Cebu. Cebu, yeah. And um, uh, he's winning 1-0. There's, if I'm not mistaken, I was shown the, the lineup, but I can't really remember, remember it. There's a warrior in uh, Cebu's lineup, if I c can correctly recall what I saw. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah, well, well <laughs> we know he won with Reno Lock because this is last year's standing format, yeah. best of five. This means that Reno Lock won the first game. It's hard to say what Ghost of Forever was playing, but from what I remember from last year, Ghost of Forever really liked control decks, and Malagos was one of his favorite cards at the time, and he was playing the Malagos uh, Warlock. I doubt he plays it right now, but you know, sometimes people do surprise others. Yeah, it's um, really interesting. We did just to get a glance at, at his hand there, and um, look like it, there, there we go. So we have the refreshment vendor. These, th this is a card that pretty much signifies that it's another Reno lock, but potentially the slower list, um, and not the one with a combo. Uh, potentially, though, it could still have combo. But really interesting that you know, we had Gosu actually pick Reno lock into Reno lock. That's something that you don't you don't normally want to pick into the mirror unless you think you have some sort of slight advantage and some edge somewhere. How can you get advantage then in this matchup? Well, maybe first, uh, Raven Lothar, what is this matchup about? Reno Lock versus Reno Lock. What are the key cards? Well, the key cards are always Dr. Boom, because that's the pressure. You need to uh, get the damage going on. And uh, there are only two answers directly playing into a Dr. Boom, right? Uh, so there's Hellfire uh, with a Dark Bomb, or the Big Game Hunter, or Siphon Soul. Actually, three. But only two require one card. And that's yeah. Big Game Hunter Siphon Soul, and it's um, a lot of po a, a lot of um, it's a lot about putting pressure on board. So having a minion, just a one minion on board, just pushing constantly for for damage, so your opponent has to react to it, is one of the things that will define the matchup. Because uh, otherwise, there's like no clear outcome of how it will go. Because both players have bo board clears, they don't want to overextend, but at the same time, they have to react to what's happening on board. There's one wild card, wild card though. Yeah, I think I, I was just gonna say as well that the um, it's gonna be interesting how they play around with their live totals because if they're both running combo, they can potentially burst for like 20, uh, you know, or in and around yeah. that number. So you know, Reno in it uh, over 20 health doesn't ever feel good, but sometimes this matchup it's actually the the correct play, and just to note on the pick of Reno into the Reno lock, the last deck Gosu has is Mage, so I imagine that could well be Freeze Mage, because Freeze Mage doesn't line up versus Reno lock very well. It mm -hmm. actually depends who you ask, but... Uh, oh really? Yeah. Is, yeah. Th is this like the, the rogue, rogue matchups yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, of, of old? We, by the way, uh, uh, mm, when we are talking about rogues, do you know why rogue uh, rogues are wearing leather armors? I know, so I will not jinx it. <laughs> because they are made of a hide. Wow. That was that was Nymph levels of <laughs> joke. I'm impressed, Lothar. I obviously we knew that. Brought your A-game. <laughs> All right, so uh, I, I do agree with Lothar uh, about the hide and uh, also about the <laughs> board presence that uh, they will have to trade um, board and establish something to do damage. And I do wonder about those combos that you mentioned, Raven, because uh, it seems like Ghost of Forever that refreshment vendor says there might not be the combo, but if he doesn't play the combo, what does he even play? Does he play Stalag and Fugen, or uh, did he cut those cards as well and play something a bit different? Maybe he plays Jaraxxus and Alexstrasza. 
both of them. Yeah, there's them. even potential that there's been a demon variant knocking around a little bit with like two void callers, mm -hmm. um, and that's the only two of in the deck because you obviously always want that card in opening hand or whatever. Um, and they play like Malganis, Jaraxxus, the usual. So uh, yeah, there's definitely a few variations, and even just like single card changes within a deck like Reno can actually make a big impact on how your uh, how your matchup lines up. But I don't. I think th the worry here is for for this Molten Giant, to be honest, like, it's not, it just might not see play this game if, you know, you control the health, keep your opponent at around 20, and then just burst them down, so it's a... But that's a valid strategy only if you have the combo, right? Because otherwise you have to grind it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's based on, on the combo gameplay, yeah. Well, now it makes kind of awkward to play the Paltish Red on turn 4, because there's a 3-5 minion staring at it, and you don't have an access to a Mortal Coil to finish it off next turn. Maybe just implosion. Yeah, the, you you could potentially still play the shredder and do like either implosion next turn or maybe dart peddler and something. Uh, you know, you know, to to try and draw something like that. I think the shredder's still okay because your opponent's probably not going to trade the, uh, the the three five into it because you never normally want to trade with shred. You know, your opponent shredder yourself as it requires a lot of resources. Um, maybe even on this turn just drop Belcher because it does the same thing as the uh, as the 3-5 except it's got Taunt. Yeah, Belcher and pressure with the Tusker. Tusker pressure, just use the Tuskers you have in your disposal. Hit him with the funnel cake. <laughs> that can work. <laughs> it, it actually is a, a perfect description of Reno Log versus Reno Log. They just throw cakes at each other, <laughs> not, not dealing any damage and then just healing. And laughing it off. Yep. It's like, oh, you hit me for 14, you're Jester. I just <laughs> would heal up. Un until it goes to fatigue and then everything gets serious. Yeah, yeah, at some point. Use the Winter Veil's snowball. <laughs> well, well, this kind of sucks. Um, abusive Shadow Flame. What about Could be okay. Dark Peddler and Defender of Argus? You trade for the Belcher. I like it. You're yeah, that's pretty good. You're your own minion. You're losing the coin, but gaining a card. M maybe first, just the Dark Petal to see what kind of card will you get. Maybe it will be a... Hmm. My only worry for that is the follow-up for turn 6. Whereas if, if you say did Abusive Shadow Flame, you could clear off and then coin out Boom next turn. Yeah, that's that's a good reason to keep the coin. Yeah, it's gone for the Dark Petal though. And, uh, now, P.O. is uh, definitely the pick here. Not only, uh, it doesn't even matter if he has a combo or not. Bio is just a good removal card in this case. Whoa! Whoops! Oh, wait. He didn't plan to play coin implosion, so wouldn't you have to go to Ford first? Because now you can't play abusive because you can't attack. Yeah, I don't quite know what's happened there to be honest, guys. <laughs> yeah, that should have been played first. Yeah. Like yeah. If, you, if you wanted to play implosion, you first implosion just to play around. You know, this kind of thing. Or if you want to play abusive, you do it and actually kill the, yeah. the Belcher. So that was kind of awkward. Also, Implosion wouldn't be that great into a 3-1 Belcher. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. That, so that turn ended up uh, terribly wrong. And it could have been so good with that uh, Shredder and... Well, obviously his plan was to use um, Dr. Boom next turn, right? But he had he's left with two mana that he can use to tap. I'm not sure how many cards is he holding. Three, six, it's actually, I think, nine. F to the Eight. left side of Reen, there's, I think there's one more. Is there? I'm not sure. We'll have to see, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, almost f I'm almost sure that there's something more to, uh, in this hand. Well, this is a really good play here, though, the low third, because to a certain extent, uh, you can just ignore whatever he, he you know he can just ignore what everyone's do here he can clear that up and just leave law walker cho because we can see that he his doesn't really so he's not stuck. suffering much from, yeah, from exactly. cho whatsoever whereas his opponent might be and you know again like we can see the other hand where he, uh, there's a fair few of those cards got slightly increased mana cost yeah what's really important is that he blocked that coin so dr boom is not coming this turn and he plays his own dr boom on turn seven the following turn you know what feels really weird as well here is that like the abusive went down just as a 2-1, whereas it could have gone down this turn, because you've got to presume the opponent probably isn't going to kill Cho, uh, and then it could have gone down and actually, you know, been able to attack or do something this turn. Yeah. So he got probably really confused by that Lord Walker Cho showing up. Does get it taunted up though, um, so uh, the, the thing here is, although this might look good because it forces the, the kill on Cho or a silence, um, 
spending an Argus in this way in a matchup, uh, in control matchup where every single card needs to count is definitely rough. This is not what he wants to do now as the Argus is, you know, just a, a 2-3 and it's it's made the lower control killable because yeah. the one damage does nothing really. I also want to explain why he's not going for Dr. Boom. It's uh, because there is a coin and a possible Twisting Nether. So you don't want to overextend. You probably just keep Boom for the time where your board is dead. Can you protect Lord Walker Cho? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? Um, so do you just establish Bran here? Use clear and then play Bran? Yeah, that's a, that's another, you know, it, we, it's going to require a, a good chunk of resource to actually clear that whole board, if, if that's the case. Yeah, I think you can do it. And uh, you probably also just uh, destroy your own 1-1 one -one to play around Mind Control Tech a bit. Oh, he actually kept it, so this means... Is he not going to play Bran? Yeah, yeah. so he, he what he's doing here instead is he's going to wait and play Bran with, uh, you know, some form of combination. So Bran Healbot, for example, to heal for 16. Um, so he wants the sort of guaranteed benefit, and like I, I was saying earlier, guaranteed value in this match, uh, versus just playing Bran down and, and you know, like putting a, quite a big threat on the board, actually. Especially because this board is actually shouting to get AoE. So if yep. you just put Bran, it's like it, even more you want to AoE it. Great. This is like a great middle line, though, isn't it? Because the board is dangerous, but he's not going all in at all. I mean, look how long this refreshment vent has been on the board. Which that is pretty was crazy. talking at the beginning. Like you put pressure, but not enough pressure to overextend. Yeah. And your opponent is in that in that awkward position. It's like, well, it's like, should I do something about it? But I don't really want to because I can't develop at the same time and. Uh, it, it just a status quo, right? Yeah. And like, look at like boom on this board. It's just terrible. So he's gonna go for the Hellfire coin into Implosion, which is probably the best he could do mm -hmm. uh, in terms of dealing with this board without again just like you just throw boom. And it's two. Two. Yeah. There's this, this one guy isn't ties. There's this one important thing though that we haven't seen any combo parts for uh, Ghost of Forever yet. He's playing. It seems like more mid-range centric version, but uh, for Cebu, there are du there's double power overwhelming, which means uh, he has increased their, th his range. Right now, he, uh, what's available for him is uh, 24 with Arcing Golem and Faceless. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'm just still thinking what to do with this situation. Dr. Boom doesn't look so good in this um, against this board, right? Is doc just Dr. Boom Chow just worth? To get the fourth minion for Mind Control Tech? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's tough because you need to do something. That's the issue. Like you can't just hold off. Yeah, and it's how much you're gonna play around a single card in in the whole of Arena deck. I don't Ooh. know. So there's Leroy. There is Leroy. So this, this is even PO. more if he gets. Um, That's faceless. 14 already. Yeah, it is a lot of damage. So you just play your Sorry. own Doctor Boom and go face. What about just uh, Siphon Soul killing the Imps and then for free mana, can you do anything? Not really. Mm, I think with this much damage in hand, you want to pressure. Um, I, I kind of like either Dr. Boom or Lothab. Or oh, that's much better, guys. Or tap into BGH works. So attack into bombs first. Hope your Imp survives. Kill the bombs. Then go BGH. Clap. I guess. Well, after Big M Hunter, you can't really play anything else. But... Luckily for him. Well, you can still clap to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I'm so good at this. So two like mid-range hits there from the bombs. Not oh, too it's terrible in the way. So um, it's fine. BGH there clears up the Dr. Boom and again represents uh, what doesn't look like scary damage probably. But we know um, with two power overwhelmings and uh, Leroy in hand. It was quite, quite amount of damage. It was scary for Tsibo though, because he is at 15, so a possible combination of uh, Arcane, Golem plus PO plus Faceless. He was in range, right there at 15. But uh, we know that Ghost of Forever is not playing it. At least for now, he didn't get it. Mm. That's something. Yep. I think it's a nice turn overall. He doesn't put himself too low. Um, the only problem now is because you know, obviously, we can see it as a lot of burst in hand. But like, how much do you actually play around that kind of burst? Because then heal bots start healing for like four. You know, he has brand heal bot, but that's sixteen. That extra eight is actually going to do nothing. Yeah. So you never feel great playing it, but sometimes you have to to survive. But you can't really play around twenty. How much damage is that? Twenty-eight, twelve, twenty-four. You can't play around twenty-four damage. 
you will not be able to build up anything on board if you always try to be at 25. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely tough. Oh, it's a really interesting situation because um, Ghost of Forever thinks about what if my opponent has the combo, right? He doesn't know, I guess, yet exactly the deck that his opponent was playing. I mean, we didn't see the first game, right? But uh, Ghost of Forever lost, so um, he knows most of the arena loss. Yes, lost. but if he plays the Arena Jackson, that can tell us that he is fearing of the combo range, right? So, so he's being intimidated by that, so... Yeah, maybe he actually lost to Leroy. Well, we did, we don't know that. We right? didn't see it. Maybe yeah. it was Leroy. Maybe it was Arkham Golem. And this is why he's so um, he's so defensive right now, spe especially playing the Reno Jackson for seventeen, and not to go for like that was even actually more value. Sibo right? playing Reno Jackson. Are you sure. Yeah, Gosu Forever is the the one without the combo, because he had uh, Vendor before. <laughs> yeah, I know it's confusing. <laughs> we have double Reno Lock. But I do believe Ghost of Forever is the one without the combo and Sibo is the one with the combo. Raven, do you agree? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I was just, you know, looking at the dot next to the name. Oh, that like dot next to the name. Okay, that might be it as well. So maybe I got confused in the beginning. But now it didn't change, so maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the very beginning, I've seen uh, when we had one perspective of the players, I've seen one of the players having the refreshment vendor and that was Ghost of Forever. And that's still the player that we see right now that had the uh, refreshment vendor. The pl this player is active, so I assume this is because of forever. Okay. But it doesn't change the fact that uh, all the things we discussed in this matchup are true, and uh, the player with the combo is uh, having an advantage, and the player without it uh, will have to somehow block the Leroy. Uh, the thing is, like, Leroy might be a lot of damage, but if there is a taunt in the way, you cannot connect the face. Twisting Nether, the most beautiful animation in the game, but won't do much. Well, you can clear the board, but yeah, you I can't develop anything afterwards. Still so should be fine. Yeah, I, th I think it's I think it's okay because you get the heal back to full anyway, um, and also the imp gang boss is cleared up pretty well. Anything that comes out of Shred is dealt with. Probably it's, it's whether you want whether you feel okay at this stage about just clearing the board. You can trade into the Shredder and then clear off, and then maybe life tap. By the way, we we were. Uh, Dark boom away from closing this game. Yeah, he has uh, 18, right? Yep. Um, so maybe Dr. Boom, after all, with uh, four boom bots. That should sounds be good. Should be okay. And then even go for face. But uh, it will tell the story of the combo in hand. I'm not sure. I think like branding to boom on this bo board is actually pretty decent anyway. Yeah. I think that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's I think it's, pr it's pr pretty okay value. I mean, where do you attack with Reno? Because if you attack with Reno in the minion, you're not selling that you have the combo yet. But if you go Reno face, it tells a lot, right? You probably just kill the zombie shot here. Oh, he's it looks like he's going for face. Yeah. That I mean that that's that up lethal, right? Well, the thing as well is that like, there's only so many things you can do to heal up, you know, for X amount of damage, right? So e Reno Jackson is one of them. Yeah, <laughs> Re Reno Jackson is one of them. And uh, we can see it as Brandon Healbot, but what I mean is with this much presence on board, if you have to commit into healing, then you don't have really much mana left to do anything else. So yeah. then, you know, Agreed. the idea here is that you, with this play, you would stay ahead no matter what they play. Um, even Twisting Nether would, uh, would be a lot of being bots to face, probably. If so, um, yeah, I, I like this play. With okay, it, there's with one question I just wanted to ask. If you s play Mind Control Tag and you still... Uh, the brand uh, does it. Proc the brand twice. does it proc twice. I believe so, but because there are still more than four minions, there are four or more minions on the board. So if there was only uh, four, it wouldn't. Now I'm sure that it triggers twice if you have five or more minions on, on your opponent's board. But I was just thinking, if you play your brand, sorry, you might oh, and steal your opponent's brand. Does it still work twice? That's a very good question. Uh, someone, I someone, provide the answer to us, please. I don't know. And we will never we'll know now. <laughs> and we will never know as well why he never didn't attack with the Shredder. Uh, he just shut off the Shredder without attacking. Oh, really? Yeah, I guess he's playing around Molten Giant. I'm ha still not sure which player is that. <laughs> 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 All right, let's, let's assume that the guy with the Leroy is Sibu. <laughs> okay. And Ghost of Forever is the one who didn't attack with the Shredder. Maybe he was playing around Molten Giants. Yeah. Giant. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gi giant. <laughs> yes. Well, there can be two if there's Faces Manipulator. True, true. Faces Manipulator is actually quite cool. A really flexible card. 
Oh, do, so do you like Howl and Lothep here to set up next turn? That's uh, decent, yeah. Uh, you might have even keep the Owl um, to give your opponent a face, uh, a false sense of security. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can do it all next turn anyway, right? But don't you want to have the option to play also a Dark Bomb if you top deck it? Apparently How not Lothar. Seven. You still will have that option, right? No, not really. Um, because if you play Owl and Leroy double PO, then you just deal 14 damage. You still need two more, right? So yeah. Like, if Gangboss might be the that card you want. I mean, we do see it as a Defender of Argus down now, so even Bran Defender of Argus could be really strong, regardless of the potential of Bran Healbot. Too strong. <laughs> strong. Yeah, it can deal with the Imp Gang boss and even just ignore the Lothar, right? Just have two two good taunts. Yeah. I think it's actually uh, even like way better than Defender of Argus onto a Molten Giant. It's worth consideration, though, because, you know, Molten Giant is it's a pretty big guy, uh, and putting that big taunt wall up is going to be pretty powerful. All right, so he goes for Bran, Defender of Argus, apparently. Now, does he Defender of Argus Bran on the 2-3? Or the Gang Boss on the 2-3? Because that could actually change a few things. Wh what would you recommend? Uh, not that. And this is not because of the cards that are in hand. I think I would, at this point, knowing you're playing against a combo lock and you're on 14 health, and he's got a lot of cards in hand, I would kind of just want to put up a taunt wall, to be honest. Like, yeah. like just as many taunts as possible, because you know the normal combo is only two minions, right? Mm -hmm. So if you put three taunts up, what are they actually going to do? So can Cebu find point. lethal? Uh, he has lethal in hand. Double PO, Leroy, and Iron Miguel. It's enough mana, it's enough board, it's enough to just win right here. Yeah, he sees it. He's counting it. Oh, famous last times. words. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he went for Alexstrasza. What? <laughs> you used Leroy to clear. You can also go for the extended BM, just play Emperor this in. <laughs> just drop Emperor. All right. Yeah, um, this looks pretty pretty done dusted. He had to count it a couple of times, though, just in case. And now he has to make sure that he connects with face, not with the yeah. well. No misclick. <laughs> well, they're playing on PCs, so most likely not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just click on it. We actually had that problem at some point um, on PCs as well. In the very beginning, I think of Hearthstone, in the beta even, the whelp somehow you could actually click on face, and because the whelp was hovering over the face, you no, could no, you can the can still happen. You, you can still happen. During the animation, when okay. the cards are just like, you know, flying around, you can still click on the card that is flying around and it's not on the board. So there's the video with the shredder, right? When the shredder dropped, yeah. you know, when it parachutes in, yeah, yeah, someone yeah. soul fired the minions to the <laughs> face. <laughs> Fe feels Can bad. Happen. <laughs> Can wow. happen. So this means that Sibo is uh, winning 2-0, two, two, two right? If I, if we got the players correctly, because... Um, yes, uh, I, I'm almost sure we had them correctly. 2-0, yep. okay. So we got that correctly. 2-0, which means that uh, Ghost of Forever is down to his last deck. And that deck was... You guys remember? Mage. 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 But I'm not sure which, ki which kind of mage. I would put him on uh, on Freeze Mage. Or maybe his own Malikos Mage. That would be fun to watch. Yeah, Malikos Freeze Mage. That's the thing. But uh, yeah, I think just, just because of, of the actual ban, uh, not the ban, the Warlock pick into Warlock, because the mirror is so similar, mm -hmm. you'd normally take another deck if it's favored at all. So I think um, I think will be Freeze Mage, just because it can be a bit awkward against Reno, because normally you only have X amount of damage as Freeze Mage. And then if you Reno back up to full and they get like the brand heal bots off, for example, then you can just heal past the amount of burst they can do. Yeah. And also like to put things into perspective, this is an uh, elimination match almost, because those guys were 0-2. So they are fighting right well now. Well, then it's not almost. It's an elimination match. It's an match. elimination match. So I mean, unless you want to play another two rounds, probably you will. Just yeah, to play around. Just, uh, to, just to play some more hard exactly, right? Exactly. But you can advance to the day three if you lose this match. Yeah. So um, that that's Tash. Uh, th tash. It's like <laughs> tough and harsh. In the <laughs> it's a new word, right? Yeah. It's, a, it, it's really harsh because, you know, you came here, you qualified. You went for the very hard qualifier, which was uh, 128 people, right? Overall. In the qualifier. Four yeah, times. there's four qualifiers. Four of qualifiers, yeah. yeah. And then uh, you're here in the Swiss tournament, which is uh, really good for the players because, in theory, you have the best chance to advance to the day two. 32 players, top 16 goes through, and then you start the day with 0-3. That feels bad. It's definitely rough, but um, it happens. Harsh. Pro pro <laughs> Harsh, yeah. It's, uh, it definitely happens, though. I mean, th there's even, you know, you look at events like Swiss, there's even tournaments where it's just sing turn up single limb, so you can turn up, lose one best of, and then go home. So, so unfortunately, some of these guys will have to deal with. Absolutely. And the uh, top 
32 is out of the money range because only top 16 is getting uh, prizes. And I believe top 16 is enough to get 500 bucks. 500 bucks for the top 16. And from top 8, you also get the point. Yeah. So two, even. For top 8. Yeah, for yes. top 8, you get two points. So you don't get any uh, Hearthstone um, Championship Tour points for top 16. No. But, I, I mean, being top 16 and being paid $500, I think that's that's a cool thing, right? Yeah. You advance to day 2. Um you were basically you you are getting paid for what you have spent to get here and right? you are still fighting uh, because and if you're in top 16 you still fight for the the main prize which is how many 40 points i think it's 43 across everywhere it's 15 points for the first place 15 yeah. points for the, it's it's still a lot of points yeah it's a hell of a lot when when you saw people um the, this past prelim uh, getting with seven points like you yeah. know getting like 15 points almost I won't say anything, but almost guarantees you like straight into the the, uh, the next prelim coming. I up. think it guarantees you for one hundred percent because I I doubt we'll have one hundred twenty eight people in the Europe that will get more than than fifteen points. So I think like if you win this event, you're guaranteed invited into the spring prelims. Yeah, well that's a cool feature. Yeah, not too bad for a weekend. Oh, a little over a weekend in Bucharest. Yeah, plus eight thousand dollars. Yeah, and eight thousand dollars, <laughs> and it. That's champion okay as well. title, right? <laughs> Absolutely. For yeah. some people, the champion title is more important than than cash. I mean, well, probably more for the established players, but uh, for 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 people that are actually here, like you know the new new faces, getting the the yeah title, the breakout performance, isn't it? It's really cool. Yeah, they want to show their skills and uh, that they are actually accomplished in Hearthstone as well. And for me, just qualifying here was uh, a, a big achievement overall because you you mentioned it, Lothar. RDU was twice. One match, yeah, one match qualifying. away from qualifying to this event. Yeah, and he's uh, at such a great uh, caliber of a player, and uh, he was super close. So those guys here, they they won versus him, like two of them at least won, and and they yeah. qualified. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually true. <laughs> I, yeah. I can't really tell who was that, but I can ask him in the break. Absolutely, <laughs> and okay. we can we can. Did name he them. not mention it to you? Like if you see these guys, just give him a nudge. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he <laughs> told me at some point when when the qualifiers were happening, but I I don't have that perfect memory, you know. So, yeah. it's also last year standing. I, I really enjoyed the format overall. How do you guys like it? Yeah, I think it's really good. I think the best thing about it is that you know changing formats is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like tournaments playing multiple different formats. So we've just come off the back of the prelims, which were conquest one. Uh, Conquest with one ban, uh, and now this is Last Hero Standing with no ban. I just like the idea of keep you know keep moving things and uh, don't have anything just stagnant too much in terms of format in the tournament. Yeah, especially that card game is basically a sandbox. And I would love to see more modes for for competitive scene to use different type of, um, of formats, just to mix it up, as I said, and just get some new to new meta game because there are different type of players that are great pilots of the decks, right? But they are also great deck builders, and usually they are not the same people. Yeah. I mean, from That's my experience, true. so there are great players that are can pilot the deck to almost perfection. And there uh, are also great deck builders that benefit the most from introducing a new, uh, a new meta game, which is a new expansion or just a new format. And they will shine in different type of tournaments that we usually see, right? So it would be cool to see some shift uh, in the organizers, you know, comfort zone. Yeah, so. and you also get to see if um, these players can actually do it all to a certain extent. And you know, like in terms of say there was a, a sealed tournament, you know, mm -hmm. they turn up to that, mm -hmm. do really well, and then turn up to a constructed tournament and do really well. Just see how like overall powerful the players are. Yeah. So What's true. What are your favorite formats overall, Lothar? In Hearthstone or in general? Hearthstone. Hearthstone. I, w I would say that kind of will sound bad because I, I did that format myself. So no. <laughs> but oh, I'm going to say the, uh, the, the Lothar format yeah, is uh, I, the I best. I love the one class format because it, it's, um, it kind of puts, puts a story to a player, right? He won with Druid, he won with Priest, he won with Warlock, he won with Rogue. And that's something cool to introduce to a Hearthstone game when, where everyone plays everything, right? Almost. Yeah. In, in a tournament. On ladder... Some people only play on, on one class, right? But when you go to a tournament, you're practically pushed to use different classes, which is also cool. But it's options, isn't it? You know, like yeah. it's good to have a mix. So it'd be good to exactly. see more things like that, to see people really shine with the classes they're known for. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know, the Fibonacci's, the Zetalots of the world, so on. We kind of exactly. have to see that in, regar uh, in regards to Ghost of Forever because he is down to one class. He's down to Mage. So now he will have to shine with that Freeze Mage three times to not get eliminated and then still continue fighting. 
because he's one loss away from not having a chance to qualify. Yeah, and his opening hand was not too great at all with a double ice lance, I believe. Ice block and arcade intellect. The intellect's fine, but the rest of those things you don't really want to see too much later in the game. So, Raven, you mentioned this matchup before, that this is um, a bad matchup for Freeze Mage. Can you explain that perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's not like a terrible matchup whatsoever. It's not like, yeah, Reno Lock just wins, but Reno Lock has the ability to... Um, to just out, outlast the mage, potentially. And it definitely depends on the, the version of mage as well. So as we saw earlier, Tice was playing a more uh, sort of uh, just direct damage, aggressive list without Antonidas and a lot more card draw. Um, whereas the standard freeze mage, I'd say, is with, you know, the Alex Straza finish and so on. Um, but the thing is, if if the player playing the mage wants to do the standard finish, Alex Straza comes down and then your opponent Reno's, suddenly you've lost so much damage and they have the, and Reno Lock has the ability to deal with the, the big threats with things like Siphon Saw, Big Game Hunter. So you remove those off the board um, and then just carry on like that and then just power through and stay out of reach of, of the mage, mage's burst overall, so. Absolutely, I, I do agree with you, but on the other hand, I think Lothar Tice was saying that he was farming freeze mage uh, as a freeze mage who was farming Reno Locks at some point or another. Have you talked to him about it? To be honest, no, I didn't. Um, I'm just thinking about it right now. But it, it all depends. Like on the ladder, there's different type of of uh, most most of the games are kind of different, right? Because it's a best of one, and uh, people are pr are not that tryhardy, and might be not even that prepared against a specific matchup, right? Because there are new players to Runia Jackson yeah. Warlock, they might be doing mistakes, and I guess... They don't usually, know what to play also. Yeah, usually it might be a huge factor that uh, if, you, if you play the, the Runia Jackson Warlock perfectly and you, you save your healings after Alex Trazas, you force your opponent to boost it down when you have the heals, and this is happening, that then the Runia Jackson Warlock could not, probably w shouldn't lose at all, right? Mm -hmm. But miracles happen. Yeah. I yeah. think the thing is as well, like the, the mage can still get in a position where you put them to a certain amount of health that like healing sort of ruins them too much. So you say, you know, you, you put them to, you know, like 18 health, which is burstable by freeze mage a lot of the time. Um, but then to heal using too much mana to do nothing else that turn. And then the mage can just keep going if it just runs so much burn. So it's definitely possible. It's really, it's not like super favored either way. I just personally feel that the, the Reno lock, if played well, can, uh, can uh, outlast, but cards like Draxxus are definitely a problem because it's not often a mage takes you low enough to warrant playing Draxxus and then just mm -hmm. can't kill you next turn anyway. Yep. So are, are we going sure. to see something similar to Fatigue Mage, uh, fa Fatigue Battle, where uh, Reno Log is just going to patiently wait, try to get those heals, and then use them only when Mage uses the burst or the burn? Might be the case. I mean, it's, it's kind of different when uh, you are aware that the opponent is playing a Pyroblast because that's like the swing. That yep. sometimes just makes the game from uh, unwinnable to surely, surely a win, right? Because that's the additional 10 damage that you need in one card, and that's very important. Um, it's a very interesting matchup, I would say. It's yeah. just it, it, it it's kind of it's kind of boring in the beginning, but it gets more interesting as as soon as it hits like turn six, seven, when people are trying to get the value from the emperor. Maybe we'll try to squeeze some fast wins because there's no ice book set up yet something like that yeah happen. i think it's um i think the freeze mage is definitely going to lean towards getting a the strongest possible emperor turn so you know even if gozu had emperor ready for turn six he might not play it because he might wait to hit like the fireballs and the frost bolts as well and then really just go for some insane burst in one turn uh, to, to be able to just pressure the, the Warlock too hard. Yeah, but on the other hand, as Lothar mentioned, if there is no Ice Block set up, there is the Leroy. If he gets a PO from um, Dark Peddler, he might actually burst Mage down if the Mage... Like, Mage will, if Mage focuses too much on just killing the Warlock, Warlock can actually kill him back before a Mage is able to do anything. Yeah, can happen. But uh, as we see now, there are two Mad Scientists on the board and one silence so there's a 50 percent chance of the iceberg already hitting up um being set up on the table and well even if that doesn't happen there's another iceberg in the hand right it's a very very interesting matchup i just really would lo love to see how it, it evolves during the the game and it also depends if the players are making correct decisions because it's an um it's a matchup that depends a lot uh, a lot on reacting to your opponents 
uh, reacting to your opponent uh, decisions. Yeah, and I think just controlling every single resource to its maximum, especially for the Freeze Mage, because the Warlock probably just needs to outlast the Freeze Mage in general, whereas the Freeze Mage needs to make sure every single little bit of burst is used to maximum potential yeah. to actually finish this game quick enough and stop the things like the Reno, the Bran Healbot, so the Lothabs locking him out of the game. Bran Healbot is just like a nightmare. It's almost a second Reno Jackson in this yeah. situation, yeah. right? It's sometimes even better than Reno Jackson. So. All right, so what do you do as Freeze Mage? Uh, you didn't get draw, so you might consider playing Blood Mage Thanos, even though Blood Mage overall is damage. Or maybe just ping and pass. I mean, one of the win conditions, I think, uh, uh, against a Rion Jackson Warlock is actually the Thalnos. Because you wait for the Emperor turn, as you said, Raven. Yep. And then you have a one mana Thalnos, which translates to four, one mana four Thalnos, damage. four damage yeah. in spells, or maybe even five. Yeah. And that's quite a lot. That's that. That might be the well. It's like the extra little bit you need, isn't it, to that actually the edge push? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To push for for lethal, right? Might be the case. Yeah, exactly. Because the thing is, everyone plays round, you know, like 15 damage against Freeze Mage mm -hmm. with the double Fireball, Frostbolt, so on. But when you do something like double Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance with a Thalnos, that's when things start getting a you know a little bit nuts and, and simply at, at the point of health where you can't play around that sort of thing because there's no realistic way to consistently do that. True. And uh, now we saw a turn when there was only a pink played on Swampus and that's about it. You get 7 damage to the face which is mitigated by the fact that you have an ice barrier so it's still one hit. One Perfect one freeze mage turn. Heal. Right. What do you want? Perfect yeah. freeze turn. <laughs> this is what you want. But I like how he didn't play the Thalnos because that, that shows us that he knows it is the MVP of the matchup and he needs to hit the Emperor. The problem is, if he doesn't draw the Emperor till like 10-15. Yep. And we've not seen tons of card draw. We've seen the Scientist in the deck by getting killed and drawing the two secrets out. We've seen Arcane Intellect. Uh, I believe, but we've not seen it much else. So not the Acolyte or the either the Novice Engineers, the Loot Hoarders, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there, there might still be a long way to go. And we can see now the Warlock's just not overcommitting to the board, but, you know, Mind Control Tech isn't exactly going to get tons of value in the Freeze Mage matchup. So you just drop that thing as a 3-3 and hope it gets to attack once, I suppose. Well, you do want to pressure if, uh, if you have an opportunity. What else could, could he do? Like, he has almost full hand, and he still needs to keep cards like Bran, like Healbot, like Reno and get that combo. So just having minions on board and pressuring at this moment is absolutely fine for uh, the Reno Warlock. I think this is the turn when you just drop Doomsayer and throws Nova. Yeah, I agree. Although you ping the Ooze last turn, but at the same time, if you play the Doomsayer into Frost Nova, you push your opponent to kill the Doomsayer if they want to preserve the board, or to silence the Doomsayer, and that means they are developing the board further. Anyway, yep. so then your flame strike has some better targets. The problem is that Twilight Drake will still survive, but alone, it, like the uh, Twilight Drake itself, is not a big threat. It's just a four attack minion. If that, if only a four attack minion will attack you each turn, then you don't care. I think I'm yeah. fine with Vice Barrier binging the free one because it's like it's not really a lot of damage. So throwing away Frozen Nova and Doomsayer can. Um, just get removal out maybe, or if, if there is no removal, block the next turn for from playing. But you want to get the value from those ice barriers. Okay, well actually it makes sense when you play Doomsayer, Frost Nova next turn, because you can ping the same turn. Yeah. And then on turn 9, uh, wait no, it's turn 8. So you can't yeah, really the ping, ping and flame strike. strike yeah. yeah, so that's not enough. Yeah, I mean it's still okay. I mean either way, it's sort of, e either play bought the major turn effectively um so we do see boom come down now and uh, i imagine the response should be frost nova doomsayer now um Let's see. but we can see that's going to get locked out by owl or even siphon soul but we probably won't siphon soul for something like alexstrasza or antonidas yeah. probably antonidas yeah especially that um, the owl apart from the mad scientist doesn't have a target. It, it can only silence your Dr. Boom. Actually, that's better, because you, you silence the, your Dr. Boom, you kill the Doomsayer. Yeah, because you don't want the body on the board to soak up the bots. Yeah, so so the damage will be maximized to the, to the mage's face instead of damaging the, yeah. the uh, Doomsayer, or you just not getting a target for your Sylvanas if you play one. Right? Yeah. 
Do you ping the Drake here? Um, Iceland's Dr. Boom ping the Drake. If there is a... I, don't know I guess pinging for one doesn't make any sense now. Because you probably will get a, a blizzard at some point. Oh wow, that's is that's telegraphing a flame strike next to uh, like super heavily. That that means he kinda threw the option of bursting down his his opponent. Cause yeah, that that ice lance with yeah. the spell power as well hits for five. I suppose you've got to make the call that at this point Thanos, uh, not Thanos, Thorson has still not been drawn. Yeah. So he doesn't, you know, it's not like, well, I can throw us the next turn well, on all these cards. He doesn't have too much so yet. So he's relying on the Antonidas right yeah. now. Yeah. Only, only on that. Yeah. Right? But he needs time to play that. So he needs to draw another Frost Nova. Because you can coin Frost Nova on turn 9. Or you need Cold of Cold, uh, Cone of Cold maybe? Well, you need Thorison. And then if you get Thorison, you need at least uh, maybe one more spell. But then he will not be able to play Ice Block. He can, if he gets Thorison, he will be play able to play Antonidas, Coin, Ice Block, uh, not Ice Block, Ice Lance, and then he needs something else. Oh, I don't like Dark Peddler. Yeah, I don't think there's any need to fill you up. You can the just bolt. play Bran and Dark Peddler and get two Soulfires or two POs or PO and a Soulfire and maybe a Charging Minion and a PO. So it's like burst from the hand. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you're floating so much mana anyway, it's not like you need to be mana efficient. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, it's fine. I mean, next turn, he's probably not going to use, like, nine mana. Um, but, yeah, kind of, kind of a rough one there, sort of just throwing away that 2-2. Two, two. The, uh, the boom bots do hit for five total, so okay. Yeah, it's um, fine. And they, obviously, the Twilight Drake is still alive. I mean, that's that guy's been going for a while, this game. From turn four. Yeah, not too it's bad. Quite a lot. Yeah, well, Freeze Mage was just pinging it, <laughs> basically. All right, so you can't do anything. Oh, my. Sorry. I'm just thinking, if you do Bran, Faceless, and then Abusive, how much? Does that proc twice? Wait, what? what? If you Faceless a Bran, do you get double double battle cry? No, no, no. no. It's oh, not does it only work once? It only works once. Oh. It multiplies to infinity. That would be so <laughs> good. That Abusive Sergeant would get some work done. But look at that. The Bran... Peddler would have been so good this yep. turn, right? Because the problem is now, like, look at his hand. He, he has Draxus that he can't really play versus Freeze Mage to, to most extents. Um, and then he just has answers, but the Freeze Mage has nothing on board to answer, so it's definitely rough. Drawing to Reno feels pretty good, and this is why now we've just seen just, just burn. He's just going to use play his cards. Yeah, he's just to, he just tries to get him in range to be able to win the Soulfire, or, like, to force him to Alex Straza himself. And when do you play the Antonidas? Because you need more than three fireballs, I think, yep. to win the game. Uh, you probably just uh, play Acolyte and ping it. Six damage. It's not that bad. Yeah, I, I think you need to draw here, definitely. You guarantee two cards off the Acolyte if you ping. Um, yeah. I just think he needs a bit more. He needs like a Frostbolt. Um, maybe another fireball, just something, so that if Emperor or when Emperor does come out, he can really do a, a lot of damage next turn or in the next couple of turns. Or maybe even just kill it to one and oh, he's going oh. for Antonidas right now, just throwing away, throwing it away. Oh, is he going to coin Ice Lance the four two? You can't just leave it, right? Oh, you can't play playing Antonidas. We're getting zero fireballs. If he plays this, I think he has to coin an Ice Lance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you just. You can't pass up the value. And hope it doesn't die to something like Siphon Soul. That's very optimistic. Yep. I think uh, I think this is going to be a problem now because he's relying on three fireballs and pyro to end the game. And uh, he's playing against Reno Lock. So uh, actually that's going to be a problem. Yeah, he's relying on no Reno in hand. He might just pull the trigger next turn and just go Falnos double fireball face and hope there is no Reno. But he didn't see a Farseer. He didn't see a Hillbot. There might not be a Farseer in this deck, actually. Oh, does he have three, four? Well, yeah, I mean, we so, so yeah, he, he could Faceless, faceless Soulfire, Demon Wrath. Oh, oh right. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he could use Demon Wrath, uh, Soulfire, and Mortal Coil as well. Um, but, but yeah. That's some cool burst you're getting. No, use Faceless. Boo. No, <laughs> boo, boo. Yeah, exactly. Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> he wants the uh -huh. fireball after all. Wait, uh, what? Oh, yeah, I think that was just strictly 
a misplay. There was well, now it's 5-3. Yeah. Why did you do that? Okay, that was kind of sequence. That sequencing was really interesting. Yeah, that was rough. Oh, he, <laughs> he threw, threw the fireball. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Justice. Oh, so next level. <laughs> What does happen? Oh, so what you can oh, do here, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Fireball, fireball. Yeah, and then Reno. they slam Reno, you slam Alex Straza, and then you have Fireball, Pyroblast. Imagine if you would discard the Reno Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that r that's right. That's right. That would be actually um, what? end of the game. Flip the table. <laughs> wow. so, so this is really interesting now because there maybe is, just there is an out for the mage. Yep, yeah, maybe use just Pyroblast, uh, Pyroblast face here. Yep. Yeah. I would advise to do that. <laughs> it's like... I mean, like, instead of double fireball, um, you pyroblast because with the double fireball, if there is Antonidas, you at least will have a chance to play another ice block and then still burst. And your opponent doesn't have an option to finish the game next turn, so your yep. ice block is not going to get popped. Well, he needs four. So Arcane Golem top deck, PO. But he used already... What's, uh, what's crazy is, though, that... Oh, no, he, he can. He can, he can prop the block next turn, right? How? Will he have Jaraxxus? Jir oh no, no he's, he's yeah, he's he can't, he can't coil, can he? He's one off mana yeah, wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he could coil into five. Oh wait, Hellfire. Uh, four, eight, thirteen, sixteen. Should still be. Well, he gets a fireball, by the way, so he can still pop the block. Oh right, I forgot that he will be he getting the fireballs. <laughs> yeah, well, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I'm bad at, at <laughs> warlock playing Antonidas, you know. You well, can attack are, you, are you telling me this situation doesn't come up all the time, Lothar? No, not really. <laughs> it's something really new. But wait. You can't do this. You can't do everything at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you need to heal. But if you heal, your opponent doesn't have a way to kill you. But then he plays Alex Thraza. And he... Goes Fireball's Ice Block and then wins with Pyroblast. And this is why using Pyroblast was so important last turn instead of the Fireballs. Because you could have finish your f or, or your opponent with double fireball frost it, it's still fine though it's still fine though because you you f the block is not popped you slam alexstraza your block is popped you go fireball face in the ice block yeah and then you just uh, fire blast next turn but i i guess when you ha already have an ice block in hand playing the pyro blast could have been better right well, I, I do would prefer Pyroblast, as you're saying, instead of double Fireball. Because Fathers. you only gain the advantage of having a card draw yeah, yeah. in that situation. And now he would just win with, uh, with Frostbolt as well, So we, if we would have double Fireball instead. Yeah, yeah. So I would definitely prefer Pyroblast, but he's still in a really good position anyway. Well, that sucks for um, Cebu. Yeah, for Cebu. Um, even though he still has this 5 free Antonidas, it doesn't matter, it's not the 5 7. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Siphon Soul doesn't change anything here, right? No, it doesn't. Well, he's at 18. He would need another heal next turn. Mm. Another heal would be. Heal Brand bot heal with bot. Brand. That's the <gasps> dream. <laughs> so, I guess you saw two fireballs. So, what about tapping this turn? Because you know that the opponent will kill you. There's no difference. Right? But you need that heal next turn. That's true. I'm not sure what I think about this, though. I think he should have run more stuff in. Well, he hopes there is no ice block. Well, the problem is now, if, if nothing dies, he can't brand heal bot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. So I would have run... <laughs> That's correct. Just run the 4-2 in. Like, do you need the 4-2 at this point? And yeah. The board. Like, you just don't. Like, he's got fireballs. You know, he's got two uh, fireballs and all the damage. That's very correct. You should have played... Well, what? if there is... <laughs> Uh, there is what? a heal bot. Oh, Reno Jackson. <laughs> that sounds great, but you have the kill. The heal bot is still good, though, because heal bot will take him out of the range. And then this ice block is getting popped, and if there is a heal bot, he cannot win this next turn. But then but he pops it and has heal to 17 anyway. Oh my <laughs> god! What yep. just happened? <laughs> that kind of wins the game. What just happened? Oh, this is a nice card to have. What but, just happened? But now we can't Bran and Lothar. <laughs> Not that it matters. Y well, it could have mattered. Well, if only if there was another ice block missing, right? Yes. But he's used two. Yes. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter in this specific game. Let's look at his face. Gosto forever. He no justice the in the ward. Oh. It's like, yeah. oh. oh, there's the <laughs> nod. We all felt that. That's happened to everyone. Well, he has Reno Jackson, though. Oh, yeah, right. But does it work yet? It's There's too many yeah, fireballs. But is it, isn't it still just lethal? Yeah, it might be with two fireballs in this board. 
10, 18, 20, yeah, tw it's 32. Foul, 32 yeah. Yeah. Uh, will Reen Jackson ping the 1 1? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, 31 then, <laughs> yeah. I think he still dies. <laughs> yeah, it might be possible. Reen Jackson might not be even active. Just play it, just show us whether it's active or not. Go see, that's what we really want to know. What can be a duplicate card that we've seen? Have we seen two Frost Novas? I think, I think we've seen one, right? All right, we've seen most of the cards. Uh. Whoops! <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> well, it wasn't enough still. So, Gosso Forever is the first player that we see is actually eliminated almost. Like, it's Wisp, so he's not eliminated per se, but he has no chance uh, advancing to the top 16. Yeah, mm, with 0 3, you can't really advance to top 16, as you said, day 2. And Cebu still has a chance because he's at sitting at two. Oh, oh, sorry, at one, one two, two right now. So he still has to win two more games to advance to the top sixteen to play in the second day. Uh, yeah. but that's about it. But now. he has a chance because even if he wins the next two matches, he's coming from kind of like the lower bracket um, tiebreakers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if a three-two doesn't make it, he might be the one three-two yes. that doesn't yeah. make it. Yeah, it all depends on the tiebreakers, as yeah. you said. Yeah. yeah, really crazy set though, or at least back into that set. Like those matches were, that last match <laughs> especially was pretty nuts. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're cool. just like, yeah, the Warlock's gonna gain a fireball from Antonidas as they do, and you're like, yeah. wait. <laughs> it's like, hey, he kind of popped the block. Oh wait, he has fireballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's uh. that's usually not happening. So that's one thing. And um, I guess I will be playing next now. Yes, that's right. Because <laughs> this is the end of round ready? three, and next will be a showmatch versus Lothar. One of you guys, one of the Twitch viewers, is going to face Lothar, and um, I will not ask you who do you think uh, is going to win. So I ask Raven. I, I just put this down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just meet this is a second. You can be honest, no, Raven. No, no, I'm confident. I've seen Lothar's deck lists. I oh have, yeah. I have full confidence in these decks, so I'm completely with you on this one. Cool. Cool to hear that. Cool All to right. hear, have that support from Mother Casa, you know. Now I'm. <laughs> Nymph I, doesn't. I'm Nymph is like. <laughs> <laughs> do yeah. I say this? <laughs> not I don't not know. sure what to say. Um, I don't um, know who your opponent is, but I'm sure he's really good because he won the raffle, so he has the power to go through uh, RNG. He has RNG on his side. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting that. Be afraid. <laughs> Be afraid. Yeah. All right. So um, that will be it for round three. Next uh, is the Lothar show match versus one of the Twitch viewers. And uh, for now, we're going into short breaks. So give us some time. We will prepare everything and then be right back with more Hearts in Action.